Is it an end of an era? Does this weekend mark the official end of the City Liverpool era? An era that we didn't think would end for a long time because we thought Klopp and Pep were so clear. But City lose yet again and Liverpool just can't even buy can't even buy goal at the moment. Welcome to the Streets Won't Forget podcast. I'm Doz, your host. Today I'm here again with Louis and Keelan. Hello. I thought yeah, I thought I'd introduce you two because obviously we're not together, so I didn't want the little <laughs> yeah 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 the little awkward silence where who, yeah. who's waiting to speak? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't want that. But you know, let's not even waste time because a lot happened this weekend. To be fair, in terms of results, um, City mm. game just happened now, and credit to Spurs, they got the win again. Spurs mm. that game for City seems to be their bogey. They can't seem to go there and win. Um, I was quite confident, to be fair, before the game that Spurs were going to win. I just the, the game they played a couple of weeks ago. I thought, you know, they were well in control until the second half. I don't know what happened mm. there, but yeah, we got to give credit to Spurs first. Um, they look awesome. like they're picking up a little bit of form again. Um, Harry Kane broke the record. We'll touch on Harry Kane. To be fair, two hundred sixty-seven goals now. He's Tottenham's all-time top scorer. That is a lot of goals. To be fair, man. Um, on Sky Sports, they were just having a little talk about uh, how, how high is Kane ranking in terms of England strikers. So that's what I'm going to ask. In terms of England strikers now, because Kane, let's be real, he's probably going to break the record, Premier record. He's probably going to break... Mm. Oh, he's definitely going to break the England record. He's he's joined on goals with Rooney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keane, I'll start with you, to be fair. Like, how... <laughs> I, I, I feel like we talk we talk in Kane quite a bit, but you know how significant do you think it is Kane being you know the outright all time top scorer for Tottenham? Um, so for Tottenham, um, not like if it was just Tottenham, I wouldn't say yeah, not that big at all. But it is yeah, he he is going for the all time prem one, which I think yeah, when you talk about like sort of England strikers, um. I don't think there's tons of like great players there when you're talking about like Kane is the greatest, and I think Shearer is in those sort of top three anyway. And if sort of Kane does beat that, um, I, I do think he has a very good argument for that. Um, in terms of yeah, best English strikers up up there, like um, because you're sort of like Rooney, and then I'd struggle sort of to go beyond that for that sort of like caliber of player. But I think he's definitely in terms of best English players, yeah, 100% up there. But as, like, best football players, that's where I think it gets a bit more interesting with Kane with regards to his sort of lack of trophies. Yeah, but lack of trophies, has he been in the best... Like, he, he's not... Obviously, Rooney was going... You know, Rooney's at United. He was never mm. not going to win trophies at United. Shearer won one trophy, you know, and fair play to him. Like, he won a Prem. It wasn't a... It wasn't any old trophy. And I think even they just said on Sky, Gary Lineker apparently only won one club career trophy and it was like an FA Cup. Um, really? Yeah, apparently. Did not win anything at Barca? Oh, actually, he might have, actually. In English football, they were definitely on okay. like English football. Uh, yeah, that, that's what I do think it is where the argument yeah, is. like, with regards to England, when you actually do look back in like the best English players, like a lot of categories... Yeah. And they often like don't really seem to be that like decorated, and it does sort of make you think that's a huge like sort of English bias on that when you look back on it. Um, mm. But yeah, I think uh, it, it's mad. It's just mad you say that because um, yeah, those guys haven't won much um, clearly, like as, as much as I'd probably even expect myself. Yeah, yeah. I I think from a personal perspective, obviously Rooney's going to be number one. But do you classify Rooney as like a, a pure striker? Because for me, Shearer's a number nine, out and out number nine, and Kane's an out and out number nine. Whereas Rooney, for me, um, in some of his best years at United, he was, um, he even said it himself, he preferred playing as like a number 10 or, you know, off the wing. And there was games where he'd be out on the right or the left and Ronaldo would be up front. And, you know, he played off Van Nistelrooy, played off Luis Saha. You know, he was more of like a supplementary striker, which is probably his goal record's even more impressive in that fact, because he wasn't like a pure penalty box number nine, neither Harry Kane, Shearer probably, yes. But I think um, in terms of um, achievement and goals together, I think Rooney's number one. Um, Shearer's probably just ahead of Kane for now. I think if Kane breaks that record, then he's he's going to go above Shearer, maybe even above Rooney. You know, you never know. 
what could happen. And to be honest, right, I think even if Kane wins an FA Cup or a League Cup at Spurs, that's as good as winning a Premier League for United or winning a Premier League for Blackburn at the time. I mean, Blackburn is obviously a huge Premier League title, but the, the money they had invested. Um, I think in this era, for Spurs to win the Premier League is nigh on impossible. Um, when you think about the money that City have, the money United have, um, and the history clubs like Arsenal and, and Liverpool have, um, I think it's it's difficult for, for Kane to win a Premier League title unless he went to a United. Mm. Um, so if, if he wins an FA Cup with Spurs, the way Spurs are, that's, that's as big as winning a Premier League title with Manchester United, I think. I mean, to be fair, yeah, Spurs, are, they're a well-established big six team in England now. I think... When, um... Obviously, you had the you had the big four back in the late two thousands: Arsenal, Liverpool, Chelsea, um, Man United. And obviously, Spurs broke that one year, but it's fair to say they're not. I know uh, look, they haven't won a trophy in fourteen years. They haven't won a, a league trophy sixty, I think, sixty years now. But I don't mm. know. It, it, they, they they're not. They're 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 big team. You have to say that they're, they're, in terms of English football. Like they're a big team, no. But no, no, they you know, are. With Spurs, I, I can't say that's as, as impressive as Shearer win one a, a prem. No, not Shearer, but like Rooney win the prem with Man United. I think a prem, yeah, that's way more impressive. But a league, like if Kane goes and gets a league cup, I think was impressive. I think you have to think about it in this way as well. There's now all these teams in England. Spain are probably the sixth biggest club in England now. In terms of you think of Man City, the investment they have, the, the scouting department, the, the greatest manager ever, probably. Um, you know, Liverpool were in the mud for a long time, but you know, Klopp came in. They had that. They have that pedigree in Europe where everything can always happen. Spurs don't have that pedigree behind them. Chelsea have turned into a powerhouse, and they've got the investment behind them. Manchester United are always going to be there or thereabouts. Um, Arsenal again were in the mud for a little bit, but the the thing is with these clubs is. They've been there and done that before in in recent memory from what we can remember. Spurs have never been that club. They're a big club, but they're more like a an Everton sized club or an Aston Villa sized club. They're not a Manchester United. They're not a Liverpool. They're not an Arsenal. They're not a Chelsea. So I, I think you have to you have to take it with with a pinch of salt. Um and you also have to kind of think about over the years they've sold their best players and not invested in the best players. They always buy these mid great players and hope that they can develop them into into great prospects. Um, and then whenever they develop a great player, everyone's always talking about, oh, they should leave Spurs, they should leave Spurs. Whereas when you're at United or when you're at Arsenal, nowadays, Arsenal a couple of years ago, maybe not, but when you're at United, where you're at, when you're at City, it's the be all and end all of your career. It's not a stopgap, whereas Spurs is a stopgap. Yeah. No, nah, it is hundred percent, and that's obviously the blemish on his name that he's been at a sort of well a stopgap club for ten ten years now. I didn't really he scored his mm -hmm. first Spurs goal December twenty eleven. I actually didn't realize it was that long ago. Obviously, he broke through. I think two thousand fifteen. Probably he had a few loan spells before that. But yeah, uh, I, I go, I go, I, I really, I feel like I go back and forth on King quite a lot. I think, I think to be fair, it's impressive two hundred and sixty seven goals. Um, that, is, that is bare goals, man. Like, mm. got, you got to think Henri's last all time top scorer. He's got 228. Rooney, yeah. I think he's 253 for um, yeah. Man United. And Lampard's got about 206, 207. And as well, with Rooney, that took 50 years for someone to break that United record as well. So it's not like it was he broke it from three years, someone three years before him. He broke that from probably the most successful player in Manchester United's history in Bobby Charlton, the most respected anyway. Um, so it's it's a crazy achievement. And I think if you take um, two certain gentlemen out of the question in terms of goal scoring, you don't get, that's not like a normal thing to score 267 goals for one club. No, that is nah. like, bro, that's so many... Like that, that's every season he's getting 30 goals and his assist record as well. Um, yeah, it's crazy. And you got to think, for a club like Spurs to score 267 goals, if you look at teams who aren't in the big six, yeah, their record goal scorers, if they're not from the 50s or 60s, 
there's someone from like recently who's got like 100, 100 goals from or something like that. It's mm. like, because obviously these clubs, no one's really like staying there that long. No one's staying there that long. If you look every year, the top scorers of the Prem will be at a top club, isn't it? So it's like, yeah. To, to score 267 goals for Spurs is 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 is, is crazy. It's crazy. Um mm. you're back above Shira Rooney. Um he, he he can be once he finishes. Uh I have him above Shira probably because I've watched more Kane live than Shira. Um mm. I think Kane's got a better goal to minutes ratio as well on the CS record. But um nah, bro, full credit to Kane, I thought to be fair, he had a good game today. Um, yeah, he's a great player, man. Yeah, I thought he had a good game. So good. You know he what really to... thrives in these games, just uh, trying loads of different things, not being, yeah, back to the um, defender, just, yeah, being experimental. Like, there was one, um, yeah, he just takes it past, like, two players and sort of, like, rolls down his shin and he doesn't really get a great kickoff. But, like, just that sort of freedom he has in these games, like, it was yeah. the same last year, like. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, Go on, go on, Louis, so. Yeah, I was gonna say that's that's like one thing he is incredible at. He always gets his shot off. in any situation. He'll get a shot off and he'll force the keeper to make a save, and that then that gets you a corner or it puts pressure on. Like he's he's so good at that. And I, I honestly, I try, I could try and think where Spurs would be without him, and I genuinely think they would be where Liverpool are right now, ninth, tenth. Yeah, probably. I mean, he's so the way he um. Like, there's not many strikers, yeah, who, when the ball goes long, you fancy the striker over the centre-back to come away with it. Mm. Not, only, not only does he come away with it, but he also retains possession of it, which is so impressive. Because, obviously, even if you look at Haaland, for as big of a guy he is, yeah, when the ball gets punted long to him, um, he doesn't win it all the time. And if he does yeah, win... he's got a dodgy it, touch. Yeah, he's got a dodgy touch. And if yeah. he does win it, it's like... Head, like it's a head on to the next guy. Like Kane will get yeah. it, control it, which is it's mad. I thought he was good today. I thought Hoiberg was was good. Um, you know his shit house really mm. sort of thing, really does sort does work. But mm. on the opposing end, right, we got a striker early in Haaland, zero touches in the Spurs box today for Haaland. Twenty seven, I think, in touches in total. It wasn't too long ago, to be fair. I know he had seven touches, Lukaku. But um, people were like, what? Seven touches in the game? And I think Haaland had 11 touches earlier on in the game against Bournemouth this season or something like that. And everyone looked at him and was like, 11 touches, you know. He doesn't need that many touches if City are winning 4-0. Um, his thing isn't touches. His game is score goals. But I don't know. I think you're starting to see now. Like, it's... I'm not saying he's the issue. But it's a bit of an issue, man, in these games when you, you're, yeah, bro, you're playing with a team who have most of the ball and you're getting no touches. Like, and Carrigan, yeah. that's the point. He he said City isn't the um, it might not be the best team for Harlem to play. Like, because one of them's got to change style. Harlem's got to change their style, or City's got to change their style. Um, so yeah, do you not reckon Harlem actually took like Harlem and City? Is it actually? How much of a great fit is it, man? What what I will say is, I think it's a um, situation where... So, you know when Ronaldo signed for United? I don't think he was Ole's preferred choice, but Ole sort of said, OK, it's Ronaldo. I'll, make, I'll try and make it work because he's Ronaldo. I think Haaland wasn't Pep's choice. I think he wanted Kane. I think that would have been his number one choice. But... Haaland becomes available. The club want Haaland, um, I think, for football and commercial reasons as well, because he's earning Haaland. And I think Pep's gone, OK, he's probably the best number nine finisher in the world. I'll take it. I'll try and make it work. But what doesn't make sense to me is, why do you then sell Zinchenko, sell Sterling and sell Jesus, who, for me, are three players that would thrive with Haaland. I think especially Sterling. I think Sterling making those impactful runs into the box in support of, of Haaland would be great because, for instance, like you said earlier, if Haaland gets... He's not going to bring the ball down. He's not going to chest it down and bring people into play, but he can have a little flick on and Sterling's there for the running behind and Grealish isn't going to do that. Mahrez isn't going to do that. I think 
with a striker like Haaland, you need either direct, you either need very direct fullbacks or you need very direct wingers. And I don't think City have either of those things. No. Um, I don't either. Key Lamine, 25 goals for Haaland, right? Sick. Right? It's sick. His goal scoring is, it, it is ridiculous. I don't know. When you're hearing about games like this where he's got, he's having no touches. Compared to on the other hand, on the other end of the pitch, you got Kane. He's not exactly having way more touches, to be fair. But when he's t- when he's getting the touches, it's so more, so much more impactful. Yeah, um, yeah, man. Like, is there is Harden a little bit of an issue for City? You reckon? Um, yes, yeah, so I wouldn't say he's an issue for City because. I think yeah, everyone was screaming for City to get a proper sort of striker and to sort of get a big source of goals in the team because there'd be lots of seasons where they've only got maybe like one guy with more than 10 goals. And I think he, he's, he's a solution to that goal problem. But yeah, I think, like Louis said, they've also sold Sterling, Sinchenko, Jesus in the summer, in which I think sell one of Sterling or Jesus, cool, but probably not both of them um, because... Um, yeah, they're, that's their two fast wingers. And now um, they, they've got no um, sort of attacking players, ones that will sort of get behind in their team. Um, Zinchenko just sort of wasn't replaced. And then obviously, yeah, seeing things like sort of um, Canseo sold as well. Like I can see why they're not as good as they were last year. Like I think the whole team um, is far worse off. It's just obviously the system's got a bit so. We've seen Liverpool, they've barely sold anyone and they've gone from going for a quadruple to having a very abysmal season um, not really much to look forward to for them other than maybe something in the Champions League so like, I, I wouldn't say it's on Haaland no I think I can just see what I can sort of understand why I think Man City are in this position where they just don't look that dangerous and they are um, bottling a lot of fixtures and um, yeah I, I wouldn't say it's because of Haaland no I think Haaland will obviously need time to sort of settle in I think if he's getting 25 goals in his first six months He's obviously got incredible football ability that he can touch up on things. That will sort itself out. But just the whole system at City is not not too great at the moment. Nah, it's not great. But nah, look, I'll be honest, guys. I, I think I think there's an issue, man. And I agree. I because let's be real. What has changed? So, so can I can I say? Do you go back to false nine then, or is that is that completely out of the equation? I, th- I think your your hands forced now. You have to try and make this work. You have to make some adaptations. But for me, for that to happen, you need to rip up seventy five percent of the team and and start fresh with that. Because I don't see how players like Grealish, Mares, Bernardo Silva, um, Kyle Walker, you know, guys like this, I don't see how they benefit from having someone who is not going to going to drop in and, and force overloads because when they had Foden as a false nine or even Jesus at times they'd kind of float across the pitch and Foden would come in and they'd have numerical advantages all over the pitch they don't have that now with Haaland um, so I think you've invested this much money you kind of have to to try and make it work but that means you're going to have to spend three four hundred million over the next couple of years and then there, there's also the point of Haaland's got that buyout clause in his contract that is activated in uh, 2026, I think, or 2025. So it could be a case of by the time they've, they've got it right, Haaland could be off to Real Madrid. So, exactly. um, you yeah. know, it's, it's it's a sticky one, man. It's a sticky one. Well, I think it's a real sticky one, man. Um, I think, yeah, as, as you said, Louis, you, can't, you, you are forced at this point really to make the Haaland thing work. Not that it's... Nah, yeah, you are forced to make it work. I know he's got 25 goals, but it, in terms of the team, it's not working. I mean, City didn't have a goal problem. They were getting loads of goals without him. Yeah, they didn't have one player who was getting all those goals. I don't know. Football for me ain't like that. It's it's like... It happens a lot. You know, a team's not scoring goal. Sorry. A team's not got a designated nine. So it's like, okay, the game's against Real Madrid. City lose 3-1. Oh, if you had a striker, you know, City would win that game, whatever. I've seen quite a bit of... Which like, isn't true as well. It's not necessarily true because mm. City clearly right now have way less control over games. Um, I don't necessarily know if Alvarez is actually 
Obviously, I think I think Alvarez is good. I don't know if they're better with him than Haaland. It's definitely for me something that's got to get got to get tried at least. I know people saying play them with the two. I say a couple games, see how to see how Alvarez is doing up top on his own. To be fair, man, because I don't know about that. I don't know. I think I I understand your point, but I think there has to be some sort of you you have to with like you have to play Haaland. You have to. It's the same situation of when Ronaldo was at United. Exactly. You, you, have, you, you have to you, you have to play him because of who they are. Is that, is that a good situation though? Like no, it's not. It's not. But like, in the back of everyone's head, they've gone, gone, finish. Yeah, yeah. No, no. You you said you make your point, and I'll, I'll try and counteract it. You make your like point. In the back of everyone's heads last year, or in the front of my head, but in the back of most people's heads was like, Ronaldo isn't really the best for our system, you know. And I think. Mm. Harlan situation ain't that much different, you know. City are suffering mm-hmm. goals, why they're suffering points. They're, they're they're firmly in the top. Well, yeah, they're they're in a they're in just as much of a top four race as they are in a title race right now. Um, and do I actually see that changing next season based on more signings? I don't know, man. I don't know. I can just see if, him, I can see him being yeah. Centered, and this story was for United in a way. Yeah, I I understand your point, and I think. Um, City are a club that have the facilities and the capabilities to be able to just spend 400 million in one window and resolve 90% of their issues and they've also got a lot of sellable assets so they can probably recoup 150, 200 million from selling players and then you never know how much they can spend we've seen what Chelsea have done without even selling players City have way much more wealth and way much more sellable assets as well Um, I also kind of think um I completely agree with you about the Ronaldo point and it was always again in the front of my mind as well and I always looked at it sort of like yes he's scoring a lot of goals but Rashford dropped off wasn't scoring goals Bruno wasn't scoring as many goals and he's a GA merchant as well um, it's the same as City man Foden's not scoring as many goals Myers isn't scoring as many goals Grealish isn't being he wasn't impactful last year but isn't being as impactful um, KDB isn't scoring as many goals um, he's getting a lot of assists um, but he's not scoring as many goals. Um, oh, yeah, Cancelo yeah. looked, Cancelo looked r- so much worse as well. Um, yeah. So I think there there is that underlying issue there of that. And yes, he's banging in goals, and maybe the team's not scoring as many. But I think when you have a player who's that good at a specific skill, you have to try and the way I look at it is right. If you take Holland out and you get someone who say is great at you get like someone who's amazing at dribbling and you you go that way. You have to have Haaland so effective at scoring goals, you have to just simply make him score goals and the rest of the team has to be functional. For me, City don't have the players to do that right now to be able to afford for him to just score goals. Whereas I think they can build that team. You look at Argentina, they allowed they had a team built around Messi and allowed Messi to do his thing. And he, he didn't track back. Yes, he, Messi's can find a pass from, from in a in a phone box. Like he's that good. But they they had a team that Scaloni built around him and maybe dropped some players. You know, they dropped Dybala. They dropped guys like that who, on paper and probably in the past for Argentina, would have played. But they built a team where they made Messi the most effective. So I think you have to you have to look at it that way. And I think Pep's got a lot of thinking to do this summer. Um, but in the situation City are in, can they afford to not win the league and not win the Champions League? Uh, yeah, why not? For this well, season. Th- this season, if they go trophyless, that's that's a huge failure of a season, and yeah. that's that's the first time Pep's n- not done. Yeah, first time Pep's done that in his career, not won uh, a trophy because they can't win the Carabao Cup now. They're not going to win, but well, they might win the FA Cup. But yeah. And they might you win. Never you never know. And I can't uh, see them winning the Champions League personally. I can't. Have... I think with City, like, uh-huh. um, yeah, they would. They would be huge favourites. I think. Yeah, they're always in the conversation. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, they have. They have been injury, injuries have been harsh on them this year as well. I did just want to say, like, I think um, seeing a Kanji and Ake playing like way too many games. And, um, but then Diaz and Laporte were on the bench today, and they were fully fit. Yeah, that's the the selections is still I think because um yeah while while we're still on City, like I want the selections thing I do think is quite um 
like if you're actually producing these sort of results and you can you justify the team selections he's doing because obviously yeah like with Haaland like his sort of link up play isn't that sort of great but then to sort of look at Arsenal who are like really good at that sort of stuff particularly like Saka and Odegaard the way their runs are sort of connected and they're always so aware of where the other player is I struggle to see how they can really build up that sort of team sort of mentality at sea because it is no one really knows who's going to play what week. Um, he's putting, there seems to be a lot of faith like in sort of younger players this year, in which um, it's too often you look at sort of Man City's team and it appears to be what the majority thinks they're better players. It's just on the bench. And I think it has taken a lot of that sort of individual personality away from City, which is why they often seem so robotic because they've not really got tons of like individual talent to sort of produce something one like amazing, like with their wingers. They're very tidy football players but they're not those ones you expect to do like something amazing in the final third mm. and then, um, yeah it's just it's it's chopping and changing all the time and I think anyone that's sort of played football um, the more you play you grow into it and you develop more uh, week in week out and if that is chopping and changing it, it does make it tough yeah uh, do you know you, what you said's right and um, I, was, I was having a conversation earlier and it made me crease right because I said um They've got Haaland up front, yeah, who's like a, a pure striker. But then they've got fucking six side players on the wing. And yeah, like... literally. And I'm not, like, because that's when, when we were talking about Haaland the whole time, I was thinking, like, cool, like, Haaland's 64 million, whatever his wages are. Like, Grealish was 100 million. Yeah, yeah. Mares was obviously a while ago. But just their wingers, like, yeah, they had no pace in them. They're all so similar, like you don't need that many of the same profile um, and they are, they are like, yeah, six aside players. Like they're not, mm. there's just certain things they're not great at. Like It's it's a good point you make about the misprofiling because I think this is where United and Arsenal are going to go right in the next couple of years. And I think this is where Liverpool and City are now going wrong because I feel like Arsenal, Arteta is the king of getting the right profiles. Um, and I feel like Ten Hag's been very, very good at that so far as well for United. He's brought in the correct profiles or at least, tried to as well with Frankie didn't go through. So I think that's a huge part of it. Whereas City, I don't know whether it's Pep, I don't know whether it's a club, but they haven't thought about either keeping the right, right profiles in the club or bringing in the right profiles with Haaland. Because for me, that summer window, man, that was that was criminal. Selling the players yeah. they did and then not not replacing them adequately with, with similar profiles. Because I, I get players are unhappy and if you're unhappy, let them go. But then it's suicide to let him go with no plan B. But you know what, though? It's not, for me, even just about changing the profiles, yeah? Haaland is, for me, prime counter-attacking player. Kind of similar to Lukaku. You're, you're going to get yeah. the best out of Haaland when you're a counter-attacking team. Or... Face him behind. Yeah, just, a, a, okay, not counter-attack, but direct at least. So I reckon yeah. maybe if he played for uh, Man United, he'd probably... He, he wouldn't... Uh, uh, he wouldn't hinder the team as much, for me. Um, so that's the thing. Is Pep going to change his style? No, I don't see it. I don't see Pep becoming a guy who goes into games being pr more pragmatic than, you know, taking the game to the team. And that's where I think you're just going to be in a loop. I can't lie, for a few years where you got Harlan getting loads of goals and you got mm. the next man doing the next thing, but, you know, you're not really... <laughs> yeah. Coming second or third, but look to be fair, like it's not, it isn't just Harlan. Like I, 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 I've never been a fan of the Greenish deal. I, I just thought, okay, if you're gonna play him as a left winger, what's he gonna give you? Uh, literally, what's he gonna give you that Sterling is not gonna give you? Even Sterling on lesser days. Obviously, I think the plan was kind of to try and convert Greenish into a eight. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. That that's what I always thought. Like um, a Bernardo Silva. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like a, literally that. But you know, mm, never happened. That. Yeah, I don't see that happening. He's just, he's just not physical enough to play there. Like Bernardo Silva, even though he's small, he's intense. Whereas yeah. Yeah. Gr Grealish just isn't intense. So he's always gonna be a winger because he like he I don't know, it's it's hard to put your finger on, but he's very he's weak. He doesn't like he doesn't hold on to the ball, like he holds on to the ball too much to be a midfielder. Yeah, is he? Let, let, let's let's be real. Like, just 
just just in general, forget misprofiling or whatever. Is he just is he just not that good, bro? Because like, okay, play him at play him at, in midfield. I see him get about a bit. I see him make a few bro. Today mm. I was looking like um Zinchenko the way he was doing doing tackles, bro. When I was doing left back. Yeah. But like when you when you don't need to be mad fast, bro, to be good, in it. You don't. You need to be the biggest. You know, yeah. he's not any of those things. I think he, for for a winger, he's not a bad build. But is he No, he's not. He's he's like six foot. He's not like he's small. Yeah. But yeah, I, I like doing this with players. Just run through the attributes. Is he that? Um, is he that great at dribbling? Like compared to Mars? No, no, he's not. He's not that great at dribbling, and he's it's like it. It, 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 lo- it looks worse because he's not fast as well. Like if he was fast, he could get away with it because he could do what Rashford does, and he could knock it past people and sprint after it. Yeah. Um, I, his link up plays all right. His Final balls, all right, but his decision making sometimes is questionable. Um, one thing I will say as well, he gets a massive free pass from the media because I think that Anthony's been so much better than him this season. And I'm not saying Anthony's been great, but the vilification that Anthony has had, and he costs less than Grealish, it's because he's not English, and Grealish gets a massive free pass. Like I don't hear anyone on. I don't hear Gabby Agbong. I know he's Gabby Agbonglahor's mate. He's not going to, but I don't hear guys like Jamie O'Hara or G- Gabby Agbonglahor and people like that soon as calling out Grealish. But Anthony, you know, he gets he gets vilified, and they actually have very very similar players in the way they operate. I'm telling you, like Anthony, like I'll tell you straight, I I I, I I'd rather have Anthony than Grealish, bro, because yeah, so would I. I just know at least like. Okay, this guy tries a lot and sometimes doesn't really come off, but God, just a bit more. He got a bit more X factor for me, man. Like he can put one at in. At least he tries as well. Like Grealish yeah. just gets bored, like, just just well, slows not, down. Bro. bro, not that Grealish don't try. That's the thing. I think he does try, bro. I think man's yeah. tried others. I watch him in games and I'm uh, like, like if you, even for instance today. Look, I'm not saying he had a stinker. He didn't have a stinker. But at the end of the day, he's one of City's first names on the team sheet now. And he's obviously a hundred million, and it's just like, bro, when he gets the ball, I'm just like, I'll be, I'll be surprised if something <laughs> great happens. From he's this. not scary, you know. He's not like, and I don't know, like you're, you're, you're right. He, for some reason, no one really wants to call him out. Like, I, I, I know people don't really like calling players out because of what they couldn't possibly do in the future. People don't like being proven wrong later. I'll tell you right now, man, like. Grealish will be like this his whole city career. Get any sort of players around him, he'll be like this man. Five goals, five assists, season, season. No, I agree. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't play for England. You know, it doesn't never really comes on for England. It just when you put it all together, it's like bro, it, it, it's just not the level for me, man. He's yeah, not... he's a calm player to bring off the bench to draw fouls and keep, yeah. you know keep the ball in the corners and do these like little touches and stuff like that. Like he's great for that, but. In terms of like a full ninety minutes, you're right, man. He's going to be like this his whole career. Yeah, I think he will, man. But um, and it, yeah, Pep, who's normally got the best talent ID, last couple windows, bro. He might have got <laughs> last season, but you know this season he's got Phillips in as well, and we haven't really seen much of him. Um, who else? He's Man's overweight. Yeah, he signed Alvarez as well. I don't know. Pep might be. It might be too early to say. So there comes a point with managers. All of a sudden, they're not. Wenger kind of was like, oh, right, he's Mourinho. Not, Mourinho, he's not making the. Mourinho, the yeah. for, who? I I say yeah, Mourinho, like a big example. But like, it does come a point, and I do, I do wonder if it's come. It's slow. Is this the beginning of it with Pep? But is he on fraud watch? Oh, it's on fraud watch. Is he on fraud watch? We'll see. I do think it's weird. They have a better chance of winning the champs because they're more likely to get in them games where against the Real Madrid, where you might not be as dominant on the ball and you might get a counter attack. That's what Harlem would prize. That's yeah, tournament football. And you know, if you look back at Ronaldo at Real Madrid, he was a tournament merchant, bro. Like yeah, and it involves a lot more luck than a than a thirty eight game Premier League season does as well. Yeah. Tournament tournament football. Yeah, literally that man. But um. We'll wrap up the city chat for now. Three back-to-back 
away defeats for Liverpool. Um, one goal they've scored in their last 360, 360 minutes. Um, 28 goals conceded already this season, which is already two more than they had from the whole of last season. And they're 11 points, 11 points of fourth. It's crazy with the Liverpool game because bro, they lost 3-0. I won't even. I won't even like Rara. They've lost three 0 I was just like, <laughs> neither. Just, back to back crazy. three nils, you know. Yeah, back to back three nils. Yeah. Relegation threat and Wolves beating them three nil. Um, I watched a bit of the highlights. Joel Matip had a man. As as I said the other week on the pod, yeah, I was like, maybe some of these players are system players. It's hard to really say a player like Matip is a system player, but like, <laughs> there was always. <laughs> There was always a suspicion with these players, like, what is their actual level? Are they, like, is Klopp juicing them or something? But I don't know. You, you're seeing it. Halos, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Keen, what is that? I mean, do you, you reckon yeah. you get Europe this season? Um, get Europe? Um, yeah, yeah Lemway. it's just... And then, what, sorry? Lem was off fourth. I don't know how many that is off. Oh, Set. Champions League. No, no, I don't think they get. <laughs> um, don't, don't think they get Champions League. Um, yeah, like with regards to Europa, um, I, I'm not really sure what the table looks like around there. Like maybe, but um, yeah, I think just, yeah, the defending was clownish from what I, I saw in like the highlights. I think like the second goal, you can just see everyone turning around to try and like, look at each other and it's just, yeah, hilarious. Like, um, yeah, no leadership at all. And um, yeah, I thought from what I saw in the highlights as well, like Salah looked like he had a funny performance. Like some of the shots he was taking, like the guy was really just trying to get shots on target for the sake of getting shots on target. And, um, <laughs> yeah, like lots of like, it looked like Liverpool had like a fair amount of chances, but no serious chances. Just all these like over the top, for, like two touch volleys. And um, yeah, like it was just, yeah, it was a funny game to watch from what I saw. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Gakpo's approaching 007. Sancho's gonna be like, "Come get your chain bag, man! Come get your chain bag!" Oh, <laughs> He's approaching 007. Nah, he stinks, bro. I, I can't lie. He... How could? Yeah, the guy had like twenty five goals or what? So like, he was banging goals this season. Yeah, he, could, he had the most GA, bro. I think. Yeah, I yeah, they're literally in Europe. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he just needs to go on Love Island, bro. I can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, John Matt up front might need to go on Love Island because <laughs> they love a square headed light skin on Love Island as well. Yeah, <laughs> bro, he's not, it's just not it, man. Like, I, I kind of thought with the World Cup he had, I thought, yeah, like he's a sharpshooter, but like, bro, what, what is yeah, he? Yeah, he was, he, he like... was moving like a, an RVP or like a Greenwood type player in the World Cup where he's just yeah. lethal. Um, but yeah. Yeah, man. I think there's there's that as well. But I think a lot of it's on Klopp, man. I know Liverpool fans, and, and I know I've got a lot of stick for saying it in my TikTok. And I know Liverpool fans have like a, a sexual obsession with him. And I, like, I understand, man. I understand it. But at the same time, bro, why is Salah hugging the touchline? First of all, why you got Salah hugging the touchline? Um, you got you got Darwin playing in like the left half space and then Gakpo as a nine. Like, bro. What are you that doing, man? Things, bro. Like... Yeah, it does. And people are saying, like, oh, we need Firmino back. We need Diaz back. Like, I don't think... Maybe Diaz, but I don't think Firmino, like, changes a lot in this team, man. Like, you, you've got... I don't know. You've just got so many problems. Like, yeah. Trent, Trent's just he's falling issue. asleep when he's defending. I don't know what happened to, to Fabinho. Like, my man's... Yeah. Not 29, he's 37 years old, bro. Yeah, literally. They're playing that guy, Bajetic. I don't know, is that how you pronounce his name? I don't he's know. their best player, yeah, Baj- Bajetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He probably, yeah, exactly. No, he's doing all right for him, but, like, I don't think they had him in, in their plans start of the season. Um, Liverpool fans kind of come with this arrogance as well. Of, yeah, we're going to get better in them next season. I'll be shocked if they got get better in them next season. Yeah. And you know what? Yeah. I don't even think it's the smartest move because, like that whole that whole team, you have to say, yeah, it needs a refresh, man. Like Hendo, still captain the side week in week out. Okay, Oxe Ch- the fact Oxe Chamberlain, bro, like he's still in it. That be Kato moving like an uncle. That be Kato. I think that bro, Liverpool fans will always be saying like, there's one Liverpool fan I follow on Twitter. He reps Kato hard, like. 
Bro, he's not coming. Like, he's been there for time, bro. He's not going to be... I know he wears number eight, but he's not going to be Gerard, bro. Like, he's... <laughs> He's not, man. But like, yeah, any bids you got, like if they get any bids for him, they should just accept. Like, they're... and that's like a lot of their players aren't be open to selling uh, half the they... team. Like... Yeah, are they going to get bids though, man? Half of them injury. No, yeah, pro pro probably not. No, like um, yeah, yeah like yeah. those those players often, yeah, they get stuff at clubs and then they do leave for free. Um, yeah, drive on the wage pool. So yeah, with Salah that. That way, that contracts like these big contracts are looking cursed, which I get. Like, it's awkward because obviously Salah had such a good, I guess, like how the club sees it is he's had such a good, like, three or four seasons where he was probably like underpaid. So it's almost just like, oh, yeah, as like a thank you for like the past few years, like, here's a more premium wage. But then, yeah, often around when that sort of contract goes, the drop off in quality can seem to be huge for some players. Happens, and, man. Yeah, it's, it's tough for them because I think that they had to give him that contract, but now it's just looking, yeah, it's tough. Like, I'm seeing a lot of Liverpool fans saying that contract should have gone to Mane and they should have let Salah go. That's what I'm seeing a lot of, and that's hindsight to be honest. It is a lot of hindsight. Yeah. Like, Salah, you have to keep Salah, but at the same time, bro, like, how many times do you see these guys sign big contracts and then fall down tools? Like, you guys are Arsenal fans, you know, full well what happened with Orba, um, Ozil. Manuel um, Sanchez. Yeah, I've seen United so many times. It's happened there. Um, yeah, Sanchez, De Gea as well. Yeah, well, it's an issue, man. Like, tw what he's 29, 30, gets the huge contract. Again, most people at the time say it's, it's a great thing. Oh, I can't, like, I can't remember many Liverpool fans saying no, they don't want it. Liverpool fans I spoke to the other day tried to say, tell me. Nah, like we should have gave that money to Mane. To be fair, I don't even know. Even if they gave that money to Mane, bro, Mane probably something just happens when you get to that age and you get that money. It's like you achieve what you've achieved in the game. Salah's got multiple individual accolades, multiple trophies. Mm. Just naturally going to be so difficult to go again, especially in this Liverpool team who haven't won a lot. But they've done a lot. Like it, the the mental fatigue on them must be too much. And yeah. I think that's... they have still won everything. To be fair, yeah, yeah, yeah. won everything once. Um, <laughs> but I don't know that Salah one. I'm a I'm I'm probably the biggest Salah fan here. Nah, man, he's yeah. he he's coming to he's he's coming to the end. I think of his. Yeah, I think like a bigger part of that problem is as well like is when Salah's getting those wages is you have to start him so it's like real realistically like you'd like to say you bench him he stays happy you don't destroy his legacy of the club or whatever he just leaves after so many years and doesn't play if he's not the best player to play in that situation but I think when it comes to Liverpool when it comes to like I said re um, shuffling their team having a revamp like Salah's kind of got to stay there and I'm not saying they need to sell him or not but I'm saying like from this point is that he's had like a drop in form. I feel like if he did go on to have like a worse drop form, you would still sort of have to start him. And there is like sort of problems that do arise there from these sort of like big contracts, which is a sort of a bit what you see with De Gea at United. Like I think a lot of other keepers on different contracts might have gone sort of sooner they wouldn't have been kept on the sort of boat as long. And um, yeah, they sort of struggle a bit because of that. And I just yeah. think it restricts what you can do with your team a bit, as well as paying that out. Yeah, there's, it, yeah, I don't know. They're another one. I think they need to kind of rip it up and go again. And they, like the clubs in the process of being sold as well, kind of a bit like United. So it's like they're in a bit of a catch twenty two. It's like yeah, they need to get sold, but then they also need to be an attractive proposition when someone buys them. So like the club, they're not known to spend that much money anyway. But it's going to be even less so now. Um, so I really think they are going to throw all their eggs in the Bellingham basket. I think club, club's been waiting for that. I think the club want that as like a parting gift. But bro, like 150 million with no Champions League football, maybe not even any Europa League football. That's a huge investment. And it also means they're not going to be able to sign anyone else. So yeah. they got problems. they got problems. Yeah, they got problems, man. They're, they're well out of top four race. Like, I don't think anyone now can be like, they're, they're going to turn it around. Like you, you can't, you just can't switch it on, bro. Mid season, like fair enough. The other season they did, um, that lockdown season, they they turned it on. They got third. They were like fifth before. They're 
what they're literally eleventh now. So lockdown football is booky as fuck, though, man. Knockout football. Yeah, lockdown football is booky. Oh, lockdown you football. Know, yeah, what a weird period. Yeah. That, man. You're not United were playing like prime Barca. Yeah, United getting that Fugazi second place. Uh, yeah, <laughs> such a weird period. On the other side of the Merseyside, bro, Sean Dyche first game. My boys took the L. Um, I'll give my take on the game. I I, I caught it from second half onwards. Um, yeah, just just a bad bad day in the office. Like one thing I said it in the in the group chat with Arsenal. Yeah, is um like. We are very, we're, we're very plan A. If plan A ain't working, you have locked us off, man. Like, there are some games I'm watching, it's like, if we ain't got the rhythm going, yeah, we're not winning this game. So obviously, yeah, we lost that game. And obviously we lost the United game earlier in the season. And yeah, while we did play better than United that game, you, you did feel like our rhythm was a bit stopped. And um, it was too easy to score goals that day for United, I think. Yeah, potentially. But, um, I don't know, our rhythm just got stopped against Everton. And uh, we don't score enough goals, man. We do not score yeah. enough goals. Like, our top scorer is on eight goals. Um, and we actually concede probably too many goals as well. Like, we don't keep that many clean sheets. So, honestly, if, if we don't win the title this season, uh, like, that's going to be that's gonna be it because you can't be having... Yeah, you share the goals, man, but like eight goals, seven goals, seven goals in terms of Odegaard, Martinelli, Saka. Basically, once their moves, right, get clocked in a game, we trust me, we're not winning. Mm. Um, I found a Jorginho debut, an interesting one. <laughs> like, it was, I don't know. I, I don't know why it came on for party, to be honest, man. And I find that signing as, as a whole just a bit of a weird one. Um, Better than because... Lacombe, though, isn't it? Mm. He, he, yeah, probably probably better than Lukonga. Nah, he's better than Lukonga. Lukonga was whack. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he is, he is, he is. I'm just trying to, trying to think about it. Yeah, <laughs> nah, I just don't read Jorginho, to be honest, man. Yeah, nah, he's, yeah. Yeah, he's not someone you want to send on when you're losing. Like. <laughs> yeah, he, do you know what I realised as well? Yeah, I was um, so I was at work and then I was kind of watching the second half of my phone like... Just him being there invites so much pressure because, like, you just know if you're a midfielder, yeah, especially like <laughs> Everton, they had Onana, they had Guy, and they had Duakori. If I see Jorginho looking with them fucking two inch arms, yeah, I'm looking at him thinking, I can get into you today and I, I can pressure you, but like, I, can, I can make you scared. And I think that was what was happening, man. I'll be real, though. I, I knew it was over for Arsenal when I seen the videos of Everton doing bleep tests and Sean Dyche stood there in his shorts and training. Bro. I knew it was over for you, man. He's stripping them back to the basics, get the ball in the fucking box. Yeah. <laughs> I think what he said in his post-match interview is like, so I was like, what's the game plan? He was like, stop them scoring, and then us get a goal. I was just like, ah, oh, long day, man. Um, <laughs> And that's our that's our bogey ground, bro. Goodson Park. I don't think we've beaten there since since Wenger days. Uh, yeah, I tell you what, though, man, that place like if they, if they can keep that as energetic as it was, like if they can keep that noise and keep that atmosphere, that's a scary place to go, bro. Because I remember back 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 in the Moyes days when it the place was rocking, and even under Martinez for a bit. When that place was rocking, man, that place was scary to go. You know, I got bopped there three 0 a couple times. Yeah. I think it did, to be fair. I don't know what it is. It's like the pitch just... Like, it just looks like a shit pitch as well. I don't, I don't know. Like, we just couldn't... It's like Kenilworth Road, but Premier League version, man. Literally, literally. That is such a good comparison. Kenilworth Road, Luton Stadium. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was... Can you reckon bad day at the office or is it actually a bit concerning for you, that game? Because it's too um, long so to for Arsenal now, to be fair. So, yeah, obviously, like, speaking... Obviously, seeing the city result as well, like, I would say that like, it's not as concerning as I thought yesterday. But yesterday, I was still obviously, I wouldn't say it was a huge concern um, because I do think Everton, they did play extremely well. Um, and the way yeah, their midfields um, conquered ours, like they were very much in the game. Like it wasn't, I don't think it was a part of us show. Like I feel they, they gave, they done the sort of high breast back and they, um, they played it well. And obviously, yeah, the goal sort of just came from a corner at the end. But then there's, I can name countless sort of Arsenal games, but we've dominated the team the whole game, scored from a corner and then sort of 
obviously the goals come from the corner. That's not really because we've been pressing well throughout the whole game, but it's sort of easy to pair the two together and say, oh yeah, so like we're doing it properly all the time. And um, I think yeah, not many teams have been able to do that this season. Like I think all the a lot of the like jokes about Deitch, like, I do think they're like holding a bit of truth at the moment because. And you sort of look at sort of the players he's got now at Everton and um, like that sort of physical midfield he's got in sort of um oh what's that? I I I know I'm a gay what a player uh, the current, yeah. Um so it just makes you sort of think the players that he had at Burnley weren't um actually the best sort of individual talents and I just do think the team he's got now is a lot more of a physical team. Um, I think he was at Burnley for like 10 years or so. He just had two years off. He's or well, a year and a bit off. And he's had a nice break. And I think he's he's ready to do... I, I think that Everton will be in safe hands with him from what I saw um, yesterday. I don't think that's just because he was playing us. I think he knows what he's doing. Like Players like McNeil... Obviously, yeah, he's played for Deitch before. Like the way him and Awobi were performing yesterday, like they just knew their role. And yet, when you talk about sort of game plans executed perfectly, um, exactly how the Deitch essentially just gets stuck in, I think they've done it very well. And it's just, it's yeah. unfortunate that we couldn't play Lampard's Everton. But um, I, I'm not mad that we lost under that. I think, like, yeah, Everton will upset another team as the season goes on. Yeah. Um, I agree. Park. Do you know what made me crease here? So, <laughs> He had a whole white defence and a whole black midfield. Yeah. <laughs> I was a learn up front. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's it's That's so, so perfect, man. man. It's so perfect. Funny, man. Yeah, literally. I've mean, seen a tweet, yeah, and it was easy. like, <laughs> who gave Deutsch pace and power black midfielders, man? That's a lead. Yeah, call. no, literally, yeah. <laughs> The guy gets someone like Seamus Coleman looking like, all right, like with someone that's actually like, Fast and powerful, he's I can't be stopped. Like but he, he was making like Phil Barsley look like a decent Premier League right back, yeah. Like, and Westwood and guys like that, like it's it's mad. Yeah, no, I think yeah, Evans done well, very well, and getting Deitch. Um, we'll see. It's game one with Everton. I mean, like they do beat us all the time at Goodson Park, so I don't know how how much you can look into it. To be fair, like genu- genuinely, like although they beat us, we're we're, we're on great. I say great form. Like City game was a loss. Um, this is me being very cool. City game was a loss. United game was a three-two scrape, which is like I feel like as well. Right at, in the first half of the United game, I was very surprised with how well United played in the first half. Yeah. And I think if that Crystal Palace game wasn't on the Wednesday, and then the Arsenal game on the on the weekend. Yeah. And Casemiro was fit. I do think that could have been, it could have gone different. I'm not saying United are a better team than Arsenal. They're not. But I just think that Crystal Palace game with the Casemiro suspension, with playing all intensity for 95 minutes and then losing in the 91st minute, the drawing in the 91st minute, I think um, United could have got something from that game had they have had a bit of a longer rest. Yeah, I think United's style of play, for some reason, unfortunately, seems to kind of favour them against Arsenal. Like, you see it sometimes. Some certain teams can just play. You know, you see it to, You see it today, prime example, Spurs and Tottenham. Spurs are not a better team than... Sorry, Spurs and Man City. Spurs aren't a better team than Man City. But yeah. home away, like, Spurs compete well against Man City. And yeah, you're right. I mean, not to go back to that game too much, but... Yeah, it's a weird one for me because whilst that game was great, we won and everything, I was a bit like, you know, if we're trying to be champions, we got us, we got to lay markers, man. We did it against Newcastle and we got them St. James's Park. And yes, we played well against Man United, but, you know, the scoreline was 3 2, tight game. But in terms of this game, like, my brother made a good point. Like, we got to see the full context of the result. If we go to Brentford, lose to Brentford, which I don't think we will because we're at home. But if we lose to City you now, and it's like, that's three losses in four, then, you know, it's like, oh, the wheels start to fall off. But, well, I don't know. Do you feel like there's now a blueprint for how to play Arsenal? Because um, that 4 5 1 mid block, low block, in fact, Newcastle did it against you, had some success. Yeah. Um, Everton have done it against you, had some success. Yeah. Um, West Ham weren't good enough on the day, but they caused you some problems in that sort of. Four five one five slash five four one sort of deep block they play. 
I feel like Brentford can come and do that as well. And they also have transitional threat. I think you should win that game. But I think Thomas Frank's a smart coach. He would have looked at Deitch today and he would have looked at um, yesterday. He would have looked at the intensity. He would have looked at how they how they played and how much they were up for it. Um, and I think that's a that's a tough game. I do think you'll beat City because City aren't going to play like that. And I, I just think you're the better, the better team at the moment. So I do think you'll win that. But I think your problem is going to be the games against the mid slash lower table sides where they're in a 4-5-1 and they... Um, uh, winning every duel or competing for every duel, and they're they're good on set pieces. They're not giving you an inch. They're not making any mistakes. I think they're the games you're going to struggle against. I don't think you'll have a problem against the likes of United and the likes of City and the likes of Chelsea and teams like that. Yeah, man, I, I do think there is a blueprint to play Arsenal um, with fast starters. If you ever that storm, um, you know we we get into a stage where. Which we're trying these same moves again, and the low blocks just shutting them down, and then we get frustrated. That's that's one thing about our team. To be fair, I've seen like I think Arteta is trying to manage it, but like our temperament in some games can just go. You obviously, but we saw that in the United game. We, we Arteta as well. His temperament went, um, changed the game plan, brought brought all those free subs, and then just ended up being a disaster. We saw it ages ago against. Um, Liverpool last season at Anfield uh, kept them out well. Arteta and Klopp had that little bust up. And then for some reason, the team's kind of just mental temperament just went and, and yeah, we, we started to leak. So I, I do think the problems with us are, are quite psychological and mental, as well as obviously like how we play as well. Um, so, and, and, and yeah, yesterday... You're, as as we've talked about, that Everton midfield just absolutely overpowered ours, and um, yeah, we couldn't create. We haven't got. Um, I don't know Martinelli's not really been on it recently. He's normally our best outlet, and um, when he's not really on it in terms of making runs in behind and actually being successful with them, it it does. Yeah, it becomes a bit tippy tappy again. Um, Martinelli needs to read Matoma's PhD. Yeah, he might need. Because my man runs with his head down. Yeah, he does. He does. Fair play. He's got the most people completed in the prem, but like, yeah, you're right. He kind of does at times. But um, but nah, man, we'll see. Obviously, we didn't get a couple of players in the window. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I say what we'll move on to United game quickly. Unless can you got any anything to say Arsenal game or. Um, just yeah, like with yeah, the Jorginho coming on, but I mm. think the main reason I thought it was like jarring is because like Jorginho is meant to like come in, yeah, to be like yeah, this guy you just use to like rest some legs when you're seeing like a game out, or like basically like extra depth for an injury, not really there to be used. In which that was kind of like a lot of people's main justification for like oh yeah, like or like probably my main justification to others people about not getting Caicedo because. Realistically, Jack and Partey is going to start anyway. You don't want to bring in that kind of money to not have him start all the time because he he might not want to accept that. But then, when you see like Jorginho coming on like first game after the win, it's a bit annoying because that signing is clearly someone we need for the squad. It's clearly someone Arteta wants to use. In which we're actually just getting Jorginho for that. Like I think it was just first game back seeing this guy who's like meant to be like a backup you straight away, um, and then just yeah, not the guy you want to bring on when um, you're one nil down. But um, I, I see like yeah, like with the sort of intensity that like us starting sort of early, I guess it has pointed towards yeah backing up the squads a lot in the sort of January. Like we had sort of having extra players so that you can yeah play as intense for longer. Um, but I just think. If that is the plan that like with the players we've sort of brought in, it's going to look, um, it's going to be tough to do that. Like um, those signings are very good, but in terms of sort of like injuries or not or whatnot. But I think for us to win games, um, a lot of our games throughout the whole season, um, they've been tight margins. They've gone with us playing a more or less full strength 11 to the 90th minute with maybe Nketiah coming on to Jesus or something. Obviously, we've lost that sub recently in Jesus been injured and the you're starting. But um I just think yeah it's the we've still our starting eleven I think is still good. But I feel like in this year um he's been moving a bit more away from his preferred starting eleven and there has been a few drops off in quality with certain players. Yeah. Um mm. I'm with that as well. It's like uh, first of all the sub 
Uh, I didn't understand it because okay, party might not be having the best game, right? right. But, like, I don't understand that if, if Fabio Vieira comes on, right, and he comes on for Shaka, I get it because it's, it's a bit of a change of shape. You've got two tens kind of player now, but it's Jorginho for life for life. It's like, what's is much going to change? I know Jorginho in comparison to party probably he gets it, gives it a bit quicker. I don't know if part his pass selection is better, but maybe he wants to keep the ball ticking. I don't know. But, um, yeah, and that's where you're at in terms of, you're right, Akeem, the subs and the, the level will be maintained. That's where we miss, we miss Jesus because I know he doesn't score as many as like a, a Haaland or someone, but like for them low block games, man, like he's so good at just picking it up and just one, two, even past a few players and and banging them in. We've seen it in these in a couple of drab Europe League games we've played. He's made a difference coming on. So yeah, I mean I'm just putting that one to for now a bad day in the office, but, yeah. but one okay. last yeah. So yeah, just one last thing. I think yeah, just with the two sort of city games as well. Um like I, I do think we we should have a big mental advantage going into that. Like I think if we can get two draws against City like that's a that's a good result for us that we've just stopped them getting points um that it makes it quite hard for them to get back from that and then I think when you're going into I think we're more than capable of sort of going into that game and just if you're playing for a draw you, you don't really know what might happen and I think sort of seeing teams like Everton sort of like I feel like it'll be nice for maybe like some games us to be like a bit of an underdog because I feel like we can play quite good on that sort of counter and then just it's a more open game um, whereas the Everton game is yeah like quite closed um, but I feel like knowing that a draw like Man City need to win we just need a draw um, I think a lot can come from that mm. yeah I mean you say against Man City right we just need two draws how far ahead do two draws put us ahead of Man United if they keep winning though? Um, that that is a good point. To be fair, yeah. Uh, like, don't worry about United, man. Yeah. No, nah, we. Should... I know, to be fair, I put yeah. I I'll say I put Man City. Like if I was, I put Arsenal main part of defense, and I put United second ahead of City. Um, because I do think they've got a bit of flow going. But you know that is a good point. Um, I I didn't consider that. But I think they're three points behind City at the moment. So they're eight points behind us. We've got a game in hand. Um. So if they won those two games, yeah, that would make it four points. Um, but then we, yeah, we don't yeah. need to play United again. Yeah, you don't need to play United again. United don't need to play City again as well. Um, they've got to play Chelsea at Old Trafford and Spurs away. Um, and then the rest of them should be straightforward. But the thing, the thing that worries me about United is the fixture congestion. They've got like, I think it's 10 games in 32 days, um, which is like ludicrous. Um, and obviously Ericsson's injured. Casemiro is now going to be out for three games. Um, so, you know, could be going to somewhere like Ellen Road. I know Leeds are kind of dead at the moment, but I don't fancy going to Ellen Road with a Fred and Sabitzer pivot, to be honest, um, with McTominay out as well. So, you know, I, I don't think you can worry about United yet. I think United have a good thing going, but I just think there's too many holes and there's too much fixture congestion and uh, there's a lot of miles they need to travel. They've got to play Barca twice in a short period of time. Um, I don't think you should worry about United yet. I think if they beat Barca, don't worry about them in the Europa League, but don't worry about them in the league because I don't think they're, they're good enough to win the league yet. Especially with, they've got basically one fit striker. Martial's never fit. Their course isn't going to win you because isn't going to win you a title as a striker. As, as decent as I think he is, he's not going to win you a title as a striker. So, but don't don't worry about United. <laughs> I, think, I think to be honest, I think the title is yours. It should be. I think United fans um, don't want egg on their face um, with their comments. Uh, uh, like, bro, it's you got even that. You got to say what you see, bro. Because. I can't say don't worry about Man United and then worry about Man City. Well, when I'm watching City, every game right is a, it, it, it. They got the, they get the odd game like the Wolves game last week where three 0 they go clear. Most games they have are a slugfest these days, man. They're having to grind to win. I think the reason you have to worry about City and not United is because te it's, technically it's still in City's hands. They could beat you twice and, and go on and win a title. Whereas United, it's not. You would have to monumentally fuck up. Yeah. Whereas City. If they win the remainder of their games, then they should win the title. 
um, well, or they should be touching you to the last day. Um, whereas United would have to win all their games and then you'd have to lose four or five. No, nah, facts. I just think, like, like we said with Liverpool earlier on, um, about you just can't just switch it on and off. I, I, I can't see, you know, Gary Neville was waiting for this 10 game city win streak to come. <laughs> I'll be shocked if yeah. that happens. Like, <laughs> it's just like Gary Neville just doesn't want you to win the title, bro. Like, he just yeah, can't accept it. Does it? Oh, bro. Yes, not to go back into the game, but whilst I was watching game one nil, Everton was defeat. I was like, oh, man, if we, if we, <laughs> Gary Neville's smugness, right, and his little um, his the way he's gonna try, he's gonna, he's gonna try and act sympathetic. If we, if we bottle it, he'll be like, I didn't want this to happen. I, 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 I said at the beginning of the season, I don't think Arsenal have the experience to go a thirty-eight game season against a powerhouse like Manchester City. <laughs> Yeah, his little words like powerhouse, and and he'll be like, I want nothing more of an Arsenal to win the league. That's when he says stuff like that, bro. It's so annoying, bro. Because it's just like, I like Arteta. I think he's a good manager. Yeah, <laughs> it's really so annoying. But <laughs> uh, quickly on the United game, two one. Um, Rashford another goal. Good goal, actually. To be fair, good team move. Yeah, that's a great goal, man. Yeah, good goal. Casemiro, what, what's what's why why can't this guy keep his head? straight when he plays Crystal Palace, man. Bro, the, the thing is, right, the out-of-context out of thing where it looks like he's strangling him, like, he just wasn't. If you watch the video, you can clearly see he... There's four men between him and Hughes. Hughes has got four United players around him. casemiro has gone over the top. He's grabbed his collar here and pulled him away from the situation. And he's not, like, grabbed him like that, like it looks on the, on the photo. He's grabbed his collar... And he's pulled him away. And then Hughes appreciates it. They actually hug afterwards. They're both laughing. Hughes isn't complaining to the ref, going up to the ref saying he strangled me. And then VAR gets involved, sends off Casemiro and just completely ignores Fred getting punched in the fucking neck by Ayu. Like, I, I get why Casemiro has been sent off because the ref's looked at that photo and he's looked at, it looks like Casemiro strangling him, but... If the ref could see that whole 30 second interaction and seen all the angles, he would clearly see Casemiro has gone over the top of Martinez, Fred, and Anthony, grabbed Hughes, and just pulled him away to try and resolve the situation. He's trying to be the uncle in the situation and resolve it. And he's ended up looking like he's trying to assault man. <laughs> so yeah. listen, man, I'm not I'm not even blaming the ref. I just think VAR is one of the most stupid things in football at the moment, man. I mean, I well. Yeah, forget forget letter of the law. Like for me, when you're making when you go off a decision, you just go out of how you feel when you first see it. When I, when I saw that, I didn't as much as I've got my my Man United agendas, man. I, I thought I, that 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 wasn't the red to be fair. I, I don't know, like he weren't I really what... him like that. Yeah. Like, he weren't. He weren't. It, it, it's been made out like he's like strangled him, like like what Homer Simpson does to Bob. Yeah, did you ask me? That's what it's been made out to be. Yeah, it's not like that at all. And listen, if you see the the photo and it like it looks bad, but then when you actually look at the video, like yeah. it's half a dozen of one and then ten of the other. Um, so I, I don't think United can have any complaints though because it's it's like. It's one of those things. Um, and they did manage to hold on. I think if they were on to draw the game, then I'd have been pissed. But like, I'd have been really pissed. Um, not just because Casemiro was sent off, but because Ayu wasn't sent off after he literally punched Fred in the throat. Um, so, I don't know, man. I don't know. And it was a resilient performance. Um, Lissandro Martinez, man, what a player. Honestly, this guy, like, he... If he's got a wife, his wife needs to be good to him, man. He's 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 so good, bro. I mean, he probably does. That's 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 the theory to it now, isn't it? Um, yeah. Well, Ralph yeah. Ralph's on the same, so exactly. But, yeah, no, nah, fair play to United. Um, quick... That's a game they lose last year, by the way. I, I, if if that situation happened last year under Oli Ragnick, they lose that game or draw it at least. Yeah, Palace are United's bogey team, to be fair. So I hate playing them, man. Yeah, they're, just, they're, they're, they're not even, even like like you know, I'd bring control at 2-0, but I always had the feeling that something something fooky was gonna happen. 
Yeah, I, I know, I know them ones. Um, and that's how I felt as well watching the Paris game at Selhurst Park. I was like, you know, I don't control Paris. Ain't that of it? It's only one goal. Um, yeah, it's it's that it's a weird one, but you know, I'd probably be happy to see the back of Palace. Um, yeah. But yeah, quick quickly, just want to touch on your comments from Chelsea. Um, yeah, nil nil, but obviously. Enzo mm. first game. I, mean, I didn't actually watch the game. Uh, Ludwig apparently had a stink. Huh? Um, Did you watch it, Keelan? Yeah. No, I didn't watch it. No, I just saw. Um, yeah. Do you know what? It's one of them games. I was watching it, but it was that shit. I had it on in the background. It, like, I, my intention was to watch it and observe it, but it was that awful that I just ended up playing FIFA. Which yeah. it has to be really bad for me to play FIFA over watching a game of football. Yeah, literally. Um, <laughs> I think they're, they're the English Galacticos now, Chelsea. I think great players. Well, not great. Um, not even great players. That, that might be the big. These players they sign quite a lot unproven, but will it click? Not this season, I don't think. I, I, the thing is, though, yeah, I've said this to you multiple times. Obviously, Keelan, you've not been in the group chat, so you haven't like heard me saying it. You might have seen my Twitter, but I, I, they've spent so much, but I still look at their team and I still think it needs another 300 million, bro. I'm not going to lie. Like, uh, there's no striker. Like, there's no defensive midfield player. There's no real creative midfield player. They ain't got um, Yeah, they ain't. And, like, oh, yeah, they're, they're just... fine. They're, they're so toothless. Yeah. Um, and also as well, like, what's their best, like, what's their best 11? What do you reckon? Yeah, I, so like, I, I was trying to do it and, um, yeah, there was, it was, it's hard and there's, there's so many players, um, like, for example, like, with wingers, I could choose multiple combinations for front three, um, easily, mm-hmm. but then, I know, yeah, just one thing I found when John went doing this is like with all the teams I've done, like Mason Mount still starts. And <laughs> I think, yeah, when you come into saying about spending 300 million, I'm like, cool, they've got all these players. They, they were players like Sterling, who's literally just bought last summer. Like, he struggles to fit into a team now. And then, yeah, guys like Mount and like, especially when um, Felix goes like Mount and Havertz still starting, it's just, um, yeah, like Bodie is obviously not like a football guy, but I, I just I, I really struggle to see um how this all works because yeah, it's very like uneven, like yeah, heavy um in defenders, uh, light in midfield, and then ridiculously heavy in wingers. Um, but yeah, yeah, with regards to like a start on eleven, like yeah, I think I, I ideally went um sort of Sterling. I think Felix at the moment. I I think I've seen enough habits to know that he's just not. The one I do think you yeah, give Felix a chance, but then he, he's leaving at the end of the year, so it's sort of awkward with that. Uh, Mudrick, like, yeah, I guess from like a great debut to getting, oh, uh, yeah, I didn't see this Fulham performance at the time, but I said, yeah, I'd start him as a front three, but um, that, that'd be my front three Sterling, Felix, Mudrick, but then, yeah, that, yeah, I feel like anything yeah. is possible and fair. Yeah, I feel like, um, look, I like Potter, I think he's a good coach, but when I watched him the other day, it was really weird because Mount was almost as advanced as Havertz. He was almost kind of playing like a second striker. And then Mudrich was like really wide left, but Mount was further forward than Mudrich. And it's kind of like you'd rather Mount be deeper and Mudrich be further forward. I get the idea because like, yeah, you want Mudrich to get on the ball and carry the ball like with dribbles. But I just don't understand like... It's, it's partly his fault and partly not because he's been given all these players. I don't think he has that much of a say in the transfers anyway. And he's been kind of told to like, these are your players, you have to make it work. But I just don't, he's not making it work. <laughs> so it's weird, man, because they probably need like a, it, bro, I think Tuchel would be all right with this team, to be honest. Um, I think like a Lewis Enrique perhaps. for the, the I don't know, man, because I feel like they need they need four or five more players, but they also probably need a new coach as well because I think Potter's someone who you, you give a project to. You don't give him 600 million and players like Felix and stuff like that. I don't know. It's weird, man. Okay, Chelsea, yeah, with all their signings, right, let's, yeah, let's actually try to agree on an 11. Cool. Um, yeah, in goal, Kepa or Mendy, I guess. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh mid first average. <laughs> oh man, 
I lean to Kepa and then I think, nah, but Kepa's just going to do some stupid stuff. Now, then I think Mendy's going to just, like, not be able to distribute it. At this point, I guess you go Kepa. But... Yeah, you probably go Kepa because Kepa's not really let him down like he's been all right. This season, say, anyway. That's yeah, it. Like in... Yeah, so I, I, I'm indifferent between either of them. But it's just like, yeah, when you're looking at a 600 mil spending in the season, it's just mad that you're starting off here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Mad. Yeah, well, you know, I'll go Kepa because obviously Potter wants to build from the back and stuff like that. But to be honest, man, I think Kepa Loki, like, I know he's good from the back, but I feel like he invites more pressure than Mendy does just because yeah. he, can't, he can't catch things from crosses. Yeah, he does, and I don't know. I he just like... snaps. He's like the hair man. Yeah, even on the ball, like he's all right. I'll go. Yeah, because because Kepa's in goal right now. Just go Kepa. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, right back Reese James when he's fit. Um, yeah. Are you doing four at the back? Are we doing four at the back? I'll go four at the back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Cool, cool, cool. I I actually think the defense is fairly straightforward. To be fair. Yeah. Apart from um, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, left back, obviously. James. Oh, yeah, Chilwell. Chilwell. Chilwell is so dead, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He needs to become a hairdresser or something, bro. Yeah. And like Ivan Campo, nah, he's... Oh, he, he needs to go fucking Thailand, man, and wear them elephant elephant trousers, bro. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know about him. Start taking acid. Yeah, he looks like one of them, them, them guys, man. One of them, that I don't want to go too deep in him, but like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, he was he was sick of Brighton, but it's again, it's similar to the players before, like that was his level, maybe. Um, yeah, Thiago Silva, he's signing a new contract, probably gets you know, right center back, yeah, and then Badi Ashile, left center back. Chile, um, obviously, when he what about for Fana when he's fit? Nah, Bali Chile has been been great. I think yeah. in the Champions League he isn't in the squad, which is just another weird thing. Like that's your like that's your centre back partnership. <laughs> Why in yeah. the Champions League are you not in the squad? <laughs> like it's gonna have to then be Thiago Silva and Colour Bali in the in the Champions League rather than. Badia Shida and two hours. So we're like, bro, this is so dysfunctional, man. It's <laughs> so oh, dysfunctional. I forgot they had um Bali. Um he's been the flop, sadly. Um taking back at Napoli. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he wouldn't get in now. I had of head of I play him yeah, to be fair, he's not better than Ustigard. Um anyway. Um, yeah, I think that's the back four. Um James, Tiago Silva, Badia Shida, and Chilwell. Yeah. Um, uh, midfield? Uh, en- Enzo. Enzo, yeah. Kovacic, I think I'd still put Kovacic there. You reckon? Yeah. Where's oh. the six, though? Where's the six? Who's the six? En- Enzo's probably got to be the six, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, because this is the thing, right? Enzo's going to become like Pogba then. Yeah. Like how Pogba was at United, because like, you're signing him, he's not a six, and then you're signing him for big money and playing him as a six when he's not a six. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think it depends if everyone's you... fit. For me, if everyone's fit, then it's um, it's uh, Enzo, Kante, and Mount. Yeah, I'll go Enzo, Kante. Bro, I might go Enzo, Kante, a double pivot, and put Felix in 10. Oh, yeah, like, maybe actually. I'm I'm yeah. fucking with that. I'm fucking with that. Like, I'm not having all this piece spent, and the mouth is still like. <laughs> but is it not the same with Kante? Like, and I'm Kante's biggest. <laughs> yeah, no, it is the exact same uh, defender. But I think that's not been as good as Tan- as, as Pete Kante. Bro. Yeah, no, yeah, because I, I, wanted, not... I wanted to say Kante as well, but I felt like there was a lot of hope from me personally in me saying Kante. <laughs> like, I, I didn't actually feel like it was me stating the truth. It was just me uh, speaking. Has... You <laughs> might as well have one leg at this point, bro. Like... <laughs> yeah. No, I hear that. Because you're going to have to protect him. You're going to have to protect him as well. You can't play him every game. So, 
<laughs> and his contract's running out in the summer. <laughs> so, this is oh. what I mean. They spent bare, but they're like, yeah. Because not... even I think so. I've got their whole team here, and then yeah, so like midfield options. You've got Enzo Fernandez, Kovacic, Gallagher, uh, Loftus Cheek. They've obviously sold Jorginho, and the, the squad's really light in some areas. How's, um, how's Loftus Cheek still there, man? Loftus yeah. absolute bum cheeks, bro. 27, that both football moves. And, and yeah, that's why that, yeah, so um, Mount obviously as well. And I think, yeah, Mount will be starting for a while. But I just, yeah, I don't, I, that shouldn't be the case. But like, yes, yeah, it is obviously, yeah, it is his role in the team. Um, What, what is it like? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll fuck with Kante, yeah. um, Enzo, and Felix. But yeah. low key, right? It might have to be like, it might have to be it might have to be Enzo Gallagher and <laughs> Mount for a bit with fucking bongs. It could even yeah. be like it could even be Enzo Gallagher Chukwemeka because Chukwemeka is a good player, but like yeah, I, I, again, again that the midfield just don't move me at all. Yeah, it doesn't. I'm it doesn't. I'm sticking with that. With Enzo Kante, he had um, he had that one plastic against Spurs earlier in the season. But then he got injured straight after that. Um, Typical, man. He's lost the legs. I'm indifferent, I guess, if he if if you want to put a conversation in ahead of him. But okay, and oh, my my vote ends. But then Kante, I don't think he'll be there next season. If I'm being honest, <laughs> because of that, I'll go Enzo, Kovac, Kovacic, and Felix. Yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. Like Personally, that midfield's uh, getting run through, bruv. Sean Dyche is gonna love playing against that midfield. Yeah. <laughs> just I feel like, yeah, for me, like if you're gonna sign these guys as well, you've got to just work them in to the team because otherwise, like, yeah, the team's not gonna improve if you just keep playing the same guys. And... Exactly. Yeah. Um, wingers, I'll go Mudrick and Sterling. I mean, yeah, but this is the thing again, bro. Sterling's a left winger, and you've signed another left winger, so now you have to play someone out of position. It's so dumb. Kind of yeah, it's dumb. It's dumb. But I agree. Yeah. And then speaking in, if we go to the summer, um, go to the summer. Where does Nkunku uh, come into that for you guys? I guess does it's the he, number nine. Does he displace any of them? Or uh, yeah, so as the number nine. Yeah, uh, probably the false nine. Yeah. What foot is he? Right footed, but he's got he's good with both feet. He's ambidextrous, amber pedal. Yeah. Sorry, oh, I was gonna say maybe play him right, right. Yeah. right. I think, yeah, like so. Madu Ake, I'm not sure if any of you have seen him, but I just associate him with like FIFA. Um, no, obviously, yeah, we'll, we'll see him in the Prem, but um, I don't know much about him, so I think it, it's yeah. hard to, to start him. Um, I've watched him once, and... but he didn't stand out. Yeah, where did he come from? PSV. Mm, same team as Gakpo. Mm, yeah, yeah, and he wasn't as good as Gakpo either. Yeah. Ah, don't know. I don't know. Don't know. You I don't think Lewis. Hall oh? Lewis Hall doesn't have a future at Chelsea anymore. Yeah, the decent cameo against oh. City in the in the car. Hutchinson. He's a bleep test merchant, man. Yeah. Nah, neither of them guys for me. You know who I would play up front for Chelsea, bro? I've never, I've, bro, I've literally never seen this guy. I reckon I'll play as a final guy up front. I don't know why. Yeah, they... yeah he was a bit of a, he was a bit of a yeah. nuisance when he came on the other day. Yeah, I've got a feeling he's probably better than Havertz. And yeah, I think I've, 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 I think I've seen enough of Havertz. Just you know, you've he's had a humongous opportunity. The amount of games he's had in the Prem. Yeah. Uh, it's just not clicking, and it's not he things. doesn't deserve it just out of principle to start like because. Yeah, just let some other guy try making it. Like, he might actually appreciate his debut, but um, yeah, and I yeah. feel like yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that for starting for fun. Like, yeah, I know nothing about him, but I just know <laughs> it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we'll just just stick like Conor Gallagher or someone up front. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, Gallagher just... be jokes up front. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just chasing the keeper down like every yeah. single attack. <laughs> nah, that is not it. Um, one player who won't be starting up front for them is a Bamiang. Yeah. Uh, I feel sorry. 
I feel sorry for him, bro. Like he's not a he ain't a bad guy. He's just I don't know. He's just not he's just not a, he's just not like a hendo, isn't it? He's not gonna be You were a good dude, bro. Welcome to good dude university. <laughs> I mean, man, like he's a good dude, but look, he's done what he needs to do in football. I think he's checked out. He's yeah, Saudi, Saudi MLS. Just go there, man. Get your get your last few paychecks and just stop being the guy who's just getting kicked out of teams in Europe, man. Like it's it's not it. It's not it. Got he's unfortunate at Barcelona, but well, give him that. Like he he done all right there. But why did um, he leave though? Well, it's kind of just, it's, it's kind of because it was the kind of the same thing happened to him. He was at Barca. They spent there, <laughs> sold him to Chelsea. He's now at Chelsea. Chelsea have spent even more than Barca. And yeah, yeah do you know it is that is incredibly unlucky. Like, but um, yeah, but the the thing is with Barca, like, yeah, they got Lewandowski, so he kind of had to go. Chelsea and even bought a striker, and he still managed to get yeah. his place. <laughs> man. He actually, he started off okay for them as well. Got a few goals in champs, but dropped from the dropped from the champs. He's one man. I don't know what's happened, but I think just with that chance, I'm just, I'm just surprised that Chelsea fans were ever gassed by it because oh man, like wait, like the guy, who, yeah, to be fair, he was like okay at Boston, but the way he's being shipped out, he's coming to a league that he was playing in like literally a year before and not doing great. Um, and just obviously, yeah, that video that Aubameyang made of his family, like, <laughs> just hilariously, <laughs> like, how that's aged, like. Yeah, man. Um, hey, man. I'll take a decision by the day. Just the paid off, man. Yeah. I'll take been vindicated. Yeah. 100%, man. That's the Chelsea 11 then, man. Um, I think that's pretty much the weekend round up, man, unless I've, I've missed anything or... No, that's that's yeah, that's I think we're touching everything we needed to touch on to be honest, boys. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, guys, thanks for hopping on again. Um, nice, brother. and more to come. Treat don't forget if you're liking the TikToks, what the full thing on YouTube, follow us on Spotify, subscribe to us on YouTube, obviously, follow us on TikTok, Instagram. Um, appreciate the support all the time, and yeah, until next time, that's been it. See you guys soon. Peace out. Yeah, peace, bro. Peace.